hugged about 10 people's necks, you can be seated. And at this time, I want to welcome everybody who is logging on tonight through Facebook and YouTube. We are happy that you are joining us uh, here. We had an amazing worship experience, and I know that you are going to enjoy the message that Pastor Sam is about to uh, bring forth. And so we just want to welcome everybody who is a part of our online church tonight. And we just want to say welcome and God bless. All right. Now, don't y'all don't get too comfortable sitting uh, because it's offering time. There we go. I was recently talking with a uh, with a pastor and he, uh, he talks a lot about giving with his church, and um, he's recently acquired some members who don't have a strong uh, church background. They don't have the type of teaching of giving and things like that. And, uh, you know, a lot of people in this day is very weary and leery of just giving to the church. They're just, there's just a lot of bad press, bad um, opinions of, around giving, and he, he looked at multiple uh, members and said, listen, I believe in giving so much, he said, I give you permission to take your tithe and go down the street and give it to that church. He said, I believe in tithing that much. It's not about you giving your money to my ministry and to, and to this church. It's about you giving your money to God, and the problem that we run into is that we, the church has become such a good business that people get into it and they corrupt what God is trying to do. Listen to this preacher. If you will give, if you will pay tithes, if you will give 10% of what comes in, then God will bless you. And I know this thought has come into everybody's mind. Well, I have paid tithes and I have given, but I haven't really seen the bigness that people talk about when they talk about what God's going to bless me with. The Bible says, however you measure, so shall it be measured back to you. Meaning if you give a dollar in the, in the plate, you're going to get a dollar's worth of a blessing. Now, let me... I'll, I'll, just, just go with me. This is not a uh, investment. I've heard preachers preach on it like that. This is not you give 20, you're going to get 25 back. This is part of what we do in being in covenant with God. God is a king and he has a kingdom and he requires that we give to him, not to Victory Tabernacle, not to Sam Luke. We give a tenth of our income to him, and then we sow our offerings for him to multiply. Amen. Giving is not a sprint, but it is a marathon. I'm not saying that God can't do something miraculous for you tonight, but most of our seasoned saints will tell you that God has done a work over the course of their lifetime. And if you are wanting God to start blessing you and you are wanting God to start having his hand over your finances, getting you out of debt, and to bless your children and your children's children, you be the one that makes the, de the decision, I'm going to give God 10%. I'm going to give God what rightfully belongs to him. I'm going to take a seed and I'm going to sow it into the ground and I'm going to watch what God will do. Amen. All right, let's do our faith statement. I am blessed to be a blessing. And if God can get it through me, he can get it to me. My giving is an authentic expression of my love for the Lord. It is not a debt I owe, but a seed I sow. And I will reap my harvest in Jesus name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
Amen. Thank you for what you're about to do. May God bless you. And I want you, once you've given, to stand with me. We're going to sing an old song. This is a night for old songs, I guess. But we're going to go back and get an old one. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. That's what baptism is about. That's what serving the Lord is about. I'm going to let it shine. You ready? You ready to sing it? Hallelujah. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Well, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. Before you see it, shake hands to somebody one more time and smile at them and give them a great big God bless you. Amen. Turn with me in your Bible to the book of Acts, the book of Acts, chapter 2. And some of you may have received an outline that was from last week. That's uh, history, so you don't need that. You can take it home with you, though, but... Uh, Tonight we're talking about why baptism is important. Why is baptism important? Look at Acts, the second chapter, and the first part of verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. About 3,000 were saved on the day of Pentecost. Acts chapter 2 says, When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And the people said, What's this all about? The apostle Peter said, This is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel that in the last days... God would pour his spirit out upon all flesh. Do you realize that today, as I speak to you, there are over 900 million believers who speak with tongues in the world? 900 million. The beginning of this outpouring resulted in the conversion of 3,000 souls, and they were baptized. But look what God has done. God promised that in the last days there would be a, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit that would be unprecedented. And we're seeing that today. 
but I want to talk to you about water baptism and why it's so important. There was a young minister who had just graduated from seminary, and he took his first pastorate. He had never pastored a church in his entire life. And so he was about to have his first baptism, and the people came into the baptistry pool, and he was nervous, and he was thinking about sacraments, and he was thinking about ordinances, and thinking about what he had learned, and how he had committed to memory certain passage of uh, scripture and so he said I baptize you my brother in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit and as he lowered him down into the water he got communion and baptism mixed up and said now drink ye all of it I don't want there to be any confusion when it comes to water baptism it is important. Baptism of, is our way of announcing to the world that we are followers of Jesus Christ. It is a public declaration of a personal decision. Now, how should, how should a person be baptized? In other words, what is the mode of water baptism? The practice of baptism in the New Testament was carried out in one way. The person being baptized was immersed or put under completely under the water and then brought back up again. Somebody told me not long ago that they wanted to be baptized by submersion. And I said, you don't want to be baptized by submersion. Oh, yes, I do. I said, you want to be baptized by immersion. Submersion is when you go under and you don't come back up. So the practice in the New Testament was to lower people down into the water and to bring them back up. In fact, there were some people that wondered if in the New Testament they practiced sprinkling. Well, let me give you some uh, insight into what the New Testament teaches. The word for baptize in the Greek, the original language of the New Testament is baptizo, and it means to plunge, to dip, or to immerse something in water. In Mark chapter 1, and verse 5, people were baptized by John in the River Jordan. Not by it, not near it, but in the River Jordan. Mark also tells us that when Jesus was baptized, he came up out of the water. Mark chapter 1 and verse 10. John the Baptist, uh, Baptist was baptizing at Enon near Salem because the Bible says in John 3, 23 that there was plenty of water there. When Philip had shared the gospel with the Ethiopian eunuch, he said, look, there's water. What prevents me from being baptized? And so Philip took him down into the water and he baptized him. In fact, the Bible says they both went down into the water Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him, and when he came up out of the water. Baptism by immersion captures the symbolism of union with Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection. Amen? Listen to what the Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verses 3 and 4. This is the Living Bible. Don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We are therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you are identified with Christ in baptism, it means that you died with him, but when he rose, you rose with him. Yeah. Romans 6 and 6 says, uh, They that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and with the lust. And if you be dead with him, you shall also live with him. Yeah. In Galatians 2 and 20, the Bible says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith 
of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. In Colossians chapter 3, beginning with verse 1, it says that if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of the Father. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. In Ephesians chapter 4, beginning with verse 22, it says, You put off the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. I wish somebody that believes what I'm saying would shout a big amen right now. The waters also remind us of the waters of God's judgment that came upon unbelievers at the time of the flood or the drowning of the Egyptians in Exodus. Similarly, when Jonah was thrown into the sea, he was thrown into a place of death because of God's judgment on his disobedience, even though he was miraculously rescued and thus became a sign of the resurrection. The Lord willing, this Sunday, I want to speak to you about signs in the heavens. On Monday, there will be a solar eclipse that will be seen only by, exclusively by, people in the United States. This happened seven years ago. When it happened seven years ago, it crisscrossed the country from the Pacific to the Atlantic. This time, it will also crisscross this entire nation making an X. It will pass through 11 cities named Nineveh. What was the message that God had for Nineveh? Repent. The, at the center of the X, X marks the spot. At the center of the X is a little town called Little Egypt. I believe that God is telling us, get ready. We are about to make our exodus. I believe that Jesus is coming, and he's coming very soon. You know, tonight men look on the world scene with anxious wonder, and they ask what will happen next and what is on the horizon. It seems that the entire Middle East is, a, is, is a, a, just a, like a stick of dynamite with a short fuse so that we don't know what could happen at any moment. And the spreading, uh, the, the war that... Uh, is, is going on between uh, Israel and uh, the Palestinians is spreading out to other regions and to other uh, countries now, such as Iran and Syria. And, and they're saying it, it may turn into World War III, but Jesus said in the last days you'll hear of wars and rumors of wars, but he said the end is not yet. In other words, he said that's not how it's going to end because God will have the last word. And I believe the next great event on God's calendar is the literal, visible, bodily appearing of Jesus Christ in the clouds of glory. So I want to talk to you about signs in the heavens. Did you know that this is only the second time since the inception of this country, or the beginning of this country in 1776, that we have seen a great American eclipse. In other words, it's not seen anywhere else in the world. I think God is giving America a sign that it's time for us to repent. The Bible says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. But it also says, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. It's time for us to get on our knees and pray and repent and seek God's face. The Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. God is calling us back to a place of prayer. Four years ago on a Sunday morning, I was slain in the spirit. God showed me a vision of a great prayer meeting. It struggled at first. I've told you that God wanted us to pray, and some people would come and just read a book. They're not here anymore, but they would come and read a book of history, or they would just sit through it passively as if to say, I'm showing up, but I'm not on board. 
But I believe that what has happened in the last six months is God validating our obedience by saying, I'm going to show you what I will do. This entire front row is filled with young people who came to know Jesus at a prayer meeting on Monday night. It's time for us to pray again. To pray until something happens. Amen. So I'm, I'm thankful to God that we are following the Lord. We're obedient to God, but we need to open our eyes because I believe Jesus is coming soon. And that's what I want to talk to you about Sunday morning. If the Lord tarries. Now, if he comes before then, I won't be here. Yeah, Pastor Evan will have to preach that morning because I will not be here. I'll be raptured and I'll be gone. <laughs> and, and by the way, just by way of explanation, he can tell a joke. <laughs> it's just not funny when he tells a joke. <laughs> They said, they said there was a man that was sentenced to prison for life and said he kind of settled in and got his bearings and said they were sitting down to chow. And one guy shouts, 46. And everybody started laughing. Another guy said, 27. And boy, they just broke him up. And he said, what's going on here? He said, well, we've all been here for so many years and we don't hear any new jokes, but we, we just number them and we don't have to tell them. We just call out a number and, and they know the joke and they laugh. He said, can I try it? He said, sure. He said, 12. Nobody laughed. He said, 32. Nobody laughed. They looked at him and said, well, some people can tell a joke and some can't. <laughs> when a person goes down in the water, it's a type of death. I remember I was baptizing a lady one time and I didn't know she had aquaphobia. She had a terrible fear of water, but she overcame that and said, I want to get baptized. So she got down in the water, and there were several candidates standing in the water waiting to be baptized. And I said, now tonight, as you go into this watery grave, and I thought she understood the symbolism. But when I said watery grave, she turned and walked out and changed clothes and went home. And I, I saw her next week. I said, what in the world happened? She said, well, it just freaked me out when you said watery grave. I thought that was going to be the end. I said, no, that's a type of death. We are crucified with Christ, but we live because he rose from the dead. Amen. Now, if the waters represent the judgment of God, I've got good news for all of you. We have already been judged. Now, the sinner is going to be judged. There's something called the great white throne judgment at the end of the millennial reign. And the unrighteous dead will be raised and they will be judged according to the word of God. And it's Jesus, the righteous judge, that will say to them, depart from me, <coughs> you workers of iniquity, into the everlasting fire of hell prepared for the devil and his angels. In other words, men will go there as intruders. They'll go there against the will of God but they will go there for the sin of rejecting Jesus Christ. But because we identified with Christ in his death and because he took our judgment, we have already been judged. That's why Romans 5 and 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And in chapter 8 and verse 1, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Somebody say amen. Baptism, now listen, baptism is not necessary for salvation, but it is necessary for obedience. Amen. You say, well, I know the thief on the cross never was baptized, but Jesus said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. That's true. But Jesus said in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24, if you will be my disciple, deny yourself, Take up your cross and follow me daily. Jesus said in Luke chapter 6 and verse 46, Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? In John chapter 14 and verse 15, Jesus said, If ye love me, keep my commandments. And Jesus 
commanded us to be baptized. Listen to this, Matthew chapter 28 and 19. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. As far as I can tell from studying the Scriptures, there were no unbaptized believers in the early church. All believers were baptized as a witness to their faith. Baptism announces a person's total commitment to Jesus Christ. And if you've already been baptized, make sure that you are living out what you proclaimed through baptism, which is total commitment to Jesus Christ. Ivan the Terrible was one of the great czars of the 16th century in Russia. Ivan wanted a wife, and he sent out a search party to find him a beautiful wife who was talented and intelligent, and they found one. And she was the daughter of the king of Greece, and her name was Sophia. And he agreed to make her his queen. But her father said, you must first be baptized and you must join the Greek Orthodox Church. So he agreed. And he took 500 of his soldiers with him to Greece. When they found out he was going to be baptized, they said, we want to be baptized too. But we are soldiers and we are committed to uh, our king. And so they devised a plan. The day they were to be baptized, they walked out into the sea with 500 priests, 500 candidates to be baptized. And just before they baptized these soldiers, they pulled out their swords, held them in the air, and they were baptized with their right hand and their sword sticking up out of the water. In other words, they said, we commit our lives to Christ, but our fighting arm and sword still belong to the king. I wonder how many unbaptized arms are in the house tonight. I wonder how many unbaptized schedules are out there. I wonder how many unbaptized pocketbooks and checkbooks we got in the church. You are either totally committed to Christ or you're not committed at all. Every person who is born again of the Spirit, washed in the blood of Jesus, is not only a new creation, but they are totally sold out and committed to Jesus Christ. And the reason Christianity has fallen into disrepute in the world is because we have too many Christians that are non-committal. Too many Christians that say, yes, I love Jesus, but I love to drink. Yes, I love Jesus, but I love to smoke dope too. Yes, I love Jesus, but I fornicate every now and then. Yes, I love Jesus, but I got one foot in the world and one in the church. When you're baptized, you're saying, I'm totally sold out to Jesus Christ. Ezekiel 36, God said, I will sprinkle clean water upon you and I will purify you and I will cleanse you from your idolatry and your iniquities and a new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you an heart of flesh and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. What he's saying is that in the new covenant, when your spirit is inextricably linked to the Holy Spirit, when you become a new creation, then God does a spiritual work in your life that makes you different. So many people today, when they first get saved, they feel like that their friends are walking away from them. And they say, I don't understand. I'm the same person. I don't know why they don't want to hang out with me anymore. 
I don't know why they don't want to, you know, be with me anymore because they used to be my buds and we used to hang out and, you know, now they don't want to be around me. I haven't changed. Wait a minute. Yes, you have. Maybe you don't know it, but they know it because they can now see Christ in your life. And yes, you have changed. And if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away and all things are new. He who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God through faith in Christ. But the good news is because you are changed, you can take them by the hand and introduce them to a Jesus who can change them too. The Bible says in Acts 3, 19, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. Repentance, not baptism, is necessary for the forgiveness of sins. But you've got to understand that in the early church, baptism was the way the believers made their official pledge of allegiance to Jesus Christ. Now the Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace are you saved through faith in that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Titus 3 and 5. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And it is a spiritual work. But there comes a time when everybody has to take a stand and say, I belong to Jesus Christ. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but it should be holy and without blemish. There's nothing about water that can wash your sins away. It is only a type, a symbol of what Christ did through the Holy Spirit. But it is important for you to testify to what God has done in your life. And this is the way that God has chosen for us to do that. Can somebody say amen? amen? Now that I'm baptized, I can live out Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect amen. will of God. Let me tell you just in plain, simple terms why baptism is so important. It seems to me that every new convert in the beginning is overjoyed with their experience. I mean, why not? God wrote your name down in heaven. God reached way down in the quagmire of sin, picks you up. Set your feet on the solid rock. Establish your goings. Put a new song in your mouth. Even praise unto God. Everything about you is new. Everything about you has changed. And in, 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 a, in that moment, there's an ecstasy that comes with just knowing my sins have been blotted out. The Bible says that God subdued our iniquities and cast our sins in the depths of the sea. Bible says he will remember our sins no more. What that simply means is that God chooses not to see our sins. One place it says that God put our sins between his shoulder blades. You ever try to look at anything between your shoulder blades? He said he would separate you from your sins as far as the east is from the west. In just a few weeks, I'm going to be going to Pakistan. And I showed my granddaughters today where that is. And I said, here we are in America, and we got to fly all the way over here, and this is Pakistan right here. And they just couldn't believe it. Of course, they don't think that, they don't understand that little globe is only this big, but I've got a 33-hour trip when I get on the plane to go. It's a long way, but I'm flying east. If I continue to fly east, I'll always fly east. I won't ever fly north or south. I'll fly east. I won't fly west. And God says, I'm going to put your sins in a place where you'll never run into them again. Amen. He didn't say from the north to the south. If you go north, eventually you go south. But he said, as far as the east is from the west. He said, I'll separate you from your sins as far as light is from darkness. Did you know this place could be as dark as midnight 
if we turned all the lights out, you wouldn't see your hand in front of your face. But if I were to strike a match and light it, all of a sudden it would just illuminate the whole place. And no matter how dark it is, it never can put out light. And so God says, when I do something in your life, the darkness around you will never put it out. You're going to be the light of the world. Amen? But after that initial wonderful ecstatic joy that floods your heart, the old enemy comes around, old Slewfoot will come around and say, you know what, you think all, you think all that wiped out all the bad things you did? Really? Do you believe that? Do you really believe that I don't have any claim on your life? Don't you know all the bad things that you've done? And don't you know who's been pulling your strings? And don't you know who's been directing your life? And don't you know that I've still got a hold on you? And there are times when you feel tempted to do something. And by the way, you know, here's a good indication that you're saved when you feel guilty about something. Sinners sin with impunity. It's as natural for a sinner to sin as it is for a yard dog to go barefoot. They just sin and they just sin and they just keep on sinning. But once you've given your heart to the Lord, God gives you a conscience. And it causes the Holy Spirit to convict you. And the Bible says in John 16, and these are the words of Jesus, when he comes, he will reprove you of sin and righteousness and of judgment to come. No one has a keener sense of right and wrong than the believer. But now wait a minute. The devil is telling me I'm missing out. The devil is telling me that I can do this and still be saved. That I can do that and it'd be all right. I could get away with it. When you get baptized, it's almost as if the devil backs up and says, well, that game's over now. I can't claim any part of you because now you've cut all ties with me. So now, officially and legally, I have no claim on your life. You are now, you are now sold out to Jesus Christ. Oh, he'll still tempt you. He'll still try you. But he knows you've crossed the line. He knows that you've taken that final step that you needed to take to make things right with God. Let's pray. Father, thank you tonight for all these who've come to be baptized in water. I realize that there's some people, Lord, that came here that I didn't even know about. And they, they have been serving you for some time, but they said, I, I'm not satisfied with my baptism. Or maybe somebody said, it was such a long time ago and I've done things that I shouldn't have done and there have been things that have happened and I, I just want to do my first works over again. I want to renew that commitment that I made to Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, I pray that this would be not just a blessed occasion. Let this be a sacred occasion. Let this be a time, God, when all those things that hinder us and hold us back would fall off of us. The chains would break and fall off. And that somehow, oh God, this would be an open door for us to move forward in faith in the power of the Holy Spirit to do what you've called us to do. And Lord, I'll give you all the praise for it in Jesus' name. Now, before we do anything else, I want to pray because I always do this. People that have joined us online, maybe you haven't received Christ as your Savior. I want you to know that just like the penitent thief who said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom, you'll hear Jesus say today, Thou shalt be with me. The Lord wants you. You say, I'm not sure he's ready to forgive me. Oh, no, he's been ready for a long, long time. When Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them, that prayer was answered. So in the heart of God, you're forgiven, but now repentance is necessary. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. If you'll turn your life to Christ, over to Christ, repent of your sins, Jesus will come into your heart and change your life forever. You ready to pray with me? Everybody here, pray out loud with me. We're going to pray with these folks that are watching. Let's do it right now. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I ask for your forgiveness. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Dear Jesus, come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. Thank you, Father, for hearing my prayer. I'm saved. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give God praise right now. Amen. You need to find a Bible-believing, Christ-centered, spirit-filled church, too. Get baptized in one. Chris, I want you to come on up, and I want us to do one more song. Uh, Pastor Mark's going to help me, and we're going to go up into the baptistry. And uh, those of you that want to be baptized, let me see your hand. Raise your hand. All right, you want to get baptized, stand up. All right, follow. Where's, where, who's, who's, who's leading them? Oh, okay, Wendell. Follow Wendell, and he'll go, he'll take you right back here. There's a changing room right behind me. So just go this way, if you will, right through here. That's right, go ahead. Praise God. Give them a hand while they're going. That's great. All righty. Woo, we're going to have a good time tonight. Hallelujah. This is great, isn't it? Okay, Chris, let's sing a little bit, and then we'll, we'll pop up back here in the baptistry. Take me to the water, take me to the water, take me to the water to be right. Oh, take, take me to the water, take me to the water, take me to the water, take me to, take me to.
There's a crowd back there, I'm telling you. This is great. This is awesome. Tell everybody your name. Maciel. And tell us about what Jesus means to you. You can be seated, everybody. Jesus is my life. Amen. I'm ready to be his rebirth, and I am happy to be welcome in his kingdom. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you happy she's in his kingdom, too? Thank God. I want to pray right now. Father, I thank you for this special service tonight. I thank you, God, for the privilege that we have to follow you in water baptism. You were baptized as an example for us to follow. And, Lord, our lives are all wrapped up in Jesus. Everything depends on Jesus. You're our hope, our help, our strength, our all in all. And we can do nothing without you. And so, Lord, as my sister and all these other men and women come tonight to be baptized just as the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus when he came up out of the water let the Spirit of God fall on them and may they never, never, never be the same after tonight this new beginning this open door to follow Jesus and to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit Amen Father, it's upon her profession of faith tonight that we baptize this, our sister, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. (laughs) Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Glory to God. All right, come on. Come on. How do you like their shirts, too? And, and it'll be redundant when I say this on Sunday, but we are going to play these on Sunday. And we're going to make a practice of this from now on that when we do this on Sunday night, the next Sunday morning, we testify to the whole church, okay? Tell everybody your name. My name is Joanne Gargarella. And Joanne, you love the Lord, don't you? I love the Lord. I was, I was saved and baptized many years ago, but I'm doing it again as a fresh uh, commitment. And, uh, Looking forward to the new work that the Lord is going to do in my life. Amen. Amen. All right. Go ahead and turn this way. Put this in. Father, thank you for my sister. It is upon her profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that we baptize her now. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. your name Alicia Alicia White <laughs> and uh, I, I prayed earlier this afternoon with her husband Clyde his aunt went to be with the Lord and uh, you know this is why it's important to have a church he said my mom asked me do you know a preacher he said yeah my pastor will do it he called me I said I would be honored to participate but folks we, we need churches I know there are people that say, you know, we don't need them or just stay home. But we need one another. We need to encourage each other in those tough times. And be a blessing to others. Amen. Alicia, what, what, why are you doing this tonight? I'm just rededicating my life. I um, got married almost three, four years, four years ago now. And uh, we joined this church only a month and a half ago. But um, I've just, the Lord's calling and. I've been a Christian very, very young age and grew up in church and all of that, but uh, never really had the uh, the will, I guess, to take that step until now. So praise God. Hallelujah. It's going to be different. Yes, sir. It's after tonight, it's going to be different. Amen. 
Amen. All right, you ready? Yes. Put one hand on your mouth. Father, thank you for Alicia, and it's upon her profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that we baptize this our sister in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell everybody your name. Morgan Allen. Morgan, you love the Lord? Yes. Uh-oh, looky here, right down in the front there. You know that guy right now? You know what? Is he is he as tough as he comes off being? Is he is he tough? Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? I think he's kind of a softy at times in his heart. You know. At times. At times. I know one thing. He sure does love you, and so does your mother. And we're happy for you tonight. Thank you for taking this step of faith. Anything you want to say before we baptize you? Um, no. I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> Here we go, Dad. You're getting this now. Baptize this our sister in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> All right. Come on, oh, got you. Yes, good. Tell everybody your name. Um, Indiana. And and uh, your mom, Cassandra, is she here tonight? Uh, she's with the kids. She's with the kids. And your aunt Rachel, is she in the building? There she is back there. <clears throat> Rachel's a soul winner. And uh, I just love you, and I'm glad you and your sister are here. In fact, I'll tell you what let's do. Sis, come on down. We're going to do you at the same time. All right? Here, you face her like that. Now, you know what to do. Okay, you, you ready? Okay, put one hand on your nose. Yeah, you don't hear it. Okay, better than this. Okay? All right, put one hand on your nose and one hand on your wrist. Father, I thank you for these young ladies and their commitment to Christ. Thank you, God, because I see Jesus in them and their heart's desires to serve you, to follow you, and to live for you. And so upon the profession of their faith right now, we baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> We're having a good time up here. Praise God. Tell everybody your name. Uh, my name is Kelsey. Tell us about your experience with the Lord, Kelsey. How did you meet the um, Lord? I grew up in the church, but ever since Corona, that's when I started doing things of the world. So now he's bringing me back to him, showing me temptations and stuff to get back to the Lord. Be the Lord. Praise God. I'm so glad you did. All right, you turn around right here. Put one hand on your nose, one hand on your wrist. Father. Thank you for my sister and house upon her profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we baptize her in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Glory. Hallelujah. All right. Praise God. Amen. Tell everybody your name. My name is Micah. And, um... <laughs> you got a fan club out there. He, um. He really have been there for me when I haven't had nobody. So when you go through bad times and you don't have nobody to be there, just know he going to be there because he has showed me. Amen. <laughs> Micah, you know what? I think, now you tell me if I'm wrong. You you prayed on a Monday night, didn't you? Okay. And I, I remember watching you when we were praying for you and you started crying. And then you walked out and I thought, oh, the devil just wouldn't let him. And what happened, I was told, is that for the first time, you never felt that much love and you didn't know how to handle it. You're just surrounded by love. Is that right? The presence of God. She came back in and surrendered to the Lord. And I'm so thankful for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Now, I'm going to tell you something. These, these young people, you watch them. They're all going to become soul winners. They're all going to start bringing their friends in. Father, thank you for Micah and it's upon a profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that we baptize this our sister in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Come on, big man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm glad.
said, I got Mark in here with me. Man. <laughs> Tell everybody your name. Mark. Mark. You know what? I never met a Mark I didn't like. This is a lot of Mark in this shirt right here. You know, this guy behind you used to be a bodybuilder and played in the NFL. Sarah Taller. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Blow that chest up. Tell us what Jesus means to you, Mark. Uh, just never-ending forgiveness and understanding that I'm just a, a human that makes mistakes. Man, we love you, and we thank God for you. Aren't you glad you go to a church where Jesus loves and forgives and heals? You know, there's some churches, honestly, and I, I'm not, I'm not, this is not a put down. I'm just telling you, there's some churches, there's no healing there. It's just a kind of a religious machine, and you, you, you run, they're running like cattle, and, and then you go out and another service comes in. I'm glad that this is a church where we want people to work their stuff out. We want people to meet the Lord, be changed by the Lord. Amen? You ready, Mark? Okay, here's what I want you to do. Put one hand on your nose and the other hand on your wrist. Father, I thank you for Mark, and it's upon his profession of faith that we baptize this, our brother, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Tell everybody your name. My name is Jaden. God's all over you, isn't he? <laughs> Tell us what you want us to know tonight about Jaden. Um, today is my first time getting baptized. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You love Jesus, don't you, man? And he loves you. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. Aren't you ready? Yeah. Put one hand on your nose, this hand on your wrist. Father, upon his profession of faith tonight, we baptize this, our brother Jaden, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Mr. <laughs> First time I ever saw this guy, he was about that tall right there. Yeah. Yeah. You, you got a fan club. Tell everybody your name. My name is Alan. Alan, you love the Lord? Yes. Uh, my heart. And I love you too, buddy. And I thank God for you. You ready to do this? Yes, sir. Okay. Father, I thank you for Alan. It's upon his profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that we baptize him in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 Alan just baptized me. I know. <laughs> Tell everybody your name. My name is Adara. Man, I, I see you guys. And I watch God work in you. And I cannot tell you how, how, how it just what it does to me. My heart just swells with emotion. And I thank God because you know what? This is an answer to prayer. Every one of these young people is an answer to prayer. There is a reason why God is doing this in this season. And I want to flow with that anointing. And so I want you to know I'm proud of you. Is there anything you wanted to say before we do this? Uh... You always got to believe. You just got to believe in something. It's always something there, and that's God. And he always going to be there for you when times is rough. And I've been baptized before, but I feel like I've lived my life, and I need to be cleansed again. Amen. Amen. And that's scripture. Do you work, your first work's over again. All right. Today, after tonight, it's going to all be different. Father, thank you for my brother. It's upon his profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We baptize him in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Are you, the, are you the last one? Yes. Well, see, we saved the last for best. <laughs> Tell everybody your name. Ronnie. You love the Lord? I do. Anything you want to say for Jesus? Thank God for grandmothers. I lost my way for a while, but she introduced me to Christ a long time ago, and, you know, I just want to rededicate my life. Is Grandma still alive? Nah, not Did you know what I believe? On my heart. The Bible says we're compassed about with a great cloud of witnesses. I believe God is allowing Grandma to see what's happening right now. And she's rejoicing in heaven because her prayers made a difference, right? Thank God for you. Okay. All right, here, put one hand on your nose. Put that other hand on your wrist. 
Father, thank you for my sister. Upon her profession of faith, that we baptize her now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. All right, there you go. If there's anybody else, come on in. The water is fine. Praise God. Will you, will you, is there anybody else? Is this it? No, tell them okay. we out of towels. So if they come in, they got to show Oh, that's it. Uh, Doreen said we're out of towels. You'll have to, to uh, run home wet. Um, tell somebody about Sunday. I think people are ready. I think God is preparing us. This is an end time message. This is a last day message. Tell somebody, bring somebody, don't just tell them, you bring them with you Sunday to hear this message on signs in the heavens. I believe we're close to the coming of the Lord. i tell you how close I believe we are. Here's what I want to do. They tell me that that eclipse Monday will be from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock. And we're going to open up this place for prayer. It'll be open all day long. And if you want to come and pray during that time, if you want to bring somebody with you and pray, we'll be here. But we're just believing. And you know what? I, I, no man knows the day or the hour. But wouldn't it be wonderful if Jesus came back? Wouldn't that be? The, it talks about a sign in the heaven, the sign of his coming. And I'll tell you the truth. I wouldn't miss a thing about this world. I'm ready to go home. Now, I believe that God's going to help us to get some people right on Sunday. So make sure you bring all your friends, your neighbors, your loved ones to hear this end time message, okay? Father, thank you for our time together tonight around your word. And I thank you so much for every one of these people that was baptized. It's such a wonderful thrill to do this tonight. Now, Father, I pray that you keep us at the center of your will and the palm of your hand, loving you, serving you. And we'll give you the praise until we get together again to worship you like this. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Why don't you hug somebody and tell them I love you with the love of Jesus. Amen.